Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen, we know now without a doubt, well, pretty close, exactly when this ETF is going to be approved and the date it's going to start trading on. We also go in today and talk to you about this evolving ecosystem that is the Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin ecosystem that is absolutely exploding. So we're going to dive into the ecosystem, show you the Bitcoin altcoins that are bound to pump as Bitcoin continues its meteoric rise to the top. All right, guys, we're going to show you how to play this game, how to make money. And most of all, this is going to be one of the best weeks of our life because finally, finally, we're going to get that approval we've all been waiting for so we can move on. And then we can wait and wait and wait and wait for this ETH ETFs. Anyway, guys, uh, let's get into this. I'm going to first of all, I'm going to go through some of the ETF news so you guys know exactly where we stand so you can have as much excitement as confidence as I do. And then we're going to get into the BTC ecosystem and show you the hottest altcoins over there. Let's get into it, guys. So first, you can see that Bitcoin rises to $47,000 for the first time since April 2022. This is actually pretty amazing. Uh, just confidence here. Uh, as I told you guys in yesterday's video, I am very long <laughs> on Bitcoin right now. Fingers crossed that 5% doesn't happen to where something it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And, you know, Jim Cramer says Bitcoin is about to top here, which we all know that the opposite is probably true and it's going to moon. That's nice that he said that. Let's listen to Jay Clayton, who's a former, uh, he's the guy who, who was sitting in, in Gary Gensler's seat before Gary came into the picture. Let's hear what he has to say. Are going to, is the SEC going to sign off on a Bitcoin ETF, you think? I, I think approval is inevitable. And, and, I, and, imminently? Uh, and, I, and I think it, that there's nothing left to decide. I know. And, and I, look, I credit the SEC for where they are. What, what has, what, where are we? We're comfortable with the disclosure. Joe just went through the cost of investing in a big an ETF. People need to know what the cost of doing it is. They need to know, you know, about the underlying Bitcoin market. Is the Bitcoin underlying trading market something that is what I would say is robust enough, efficacious enough, mm -hmm. where you can rely on it? It, it is much better today than it was five years ago. Five years ago, there was wash sales, there was laddering, there was all sorts of things that you wouldn't want to make available to the general public um, because of that risk. And the last thing, and I think this is missed, is the technology to actually provide the product, the custodying, um, the create, the redeem. This is, a, this is a big step, not just for Bitcoin, but for finance generally. If you can digitize, tokenize, underlying assets and trade that way, yep. that's a potential significant change across finance, not just in the you know, crypto space. But you, you yeah. think Bitcoin ETF approval is coming and imminent? Yeah, well? I do. Yeah. I could be wrong, but that's what I think. Okay. He knows. He knows. But that was, that's very important what he said. So obviously he, he thinks that things are in the right position uh, right now for this to happen. And then another thing too is something that we talk about in the show quite a bit is the upcoming, you know, we're not at the finish line guys right now. We as a crypto industry are literally just off the start line. This is when the entire world will finally start to acknowledge Bitcoin and then soon after Ethereum and then altcoins as legitimate asset classes. And like I said before as well, that when the world starts to tokenize equities and securities and trade them on chain, it's going to bring so much money in this industry. It's not even funny. So if you guys are watching this, give yourself a pat on the back because we are very early and I, I am very, very confident that together as a community, guys, uh, we will make life-changing gains in this industry because we are that early and we are finding all the alpha and I'm just very, very excited for the things to come. I've been in the space for 12 years and the time has come for the world to recognize. <laughs> okay, so uh, so Gavin Chen says, let me get this right. BTC was trending up on all time frames, up after liquidating, but loads of longs above the wedge. It's been consolidating for a month, days away from legal approval for people with trillions in assets to, to shove in and people still sold. Yeah, you're seeing that the people are still, I don't know why, People are still trying to are selling Bitcoin even today when this ETF approval is probably less than 20, 24 hours away, right? It's like 
it's like 2 p.m. right now in New York. Yeah, let's see. In 24 hours from now, we very well could have this whole thing approved by now. And people are still shorting, unbelievable, and selling Bitcoin. Um, this is, just shows you the, and the, the point here is that you can see that in the 2017 bull run, this is the, the search volume for Google, I think. And you can see in 2017 bull run was way higher than the last bull run. But basically what he goes on to say here in Kaleo is that, that you just start to see this search volume picking up right now. But I also agree with him on this point that I think that this is going to look like this after this bull run. It's just going to be through absolutely through the roof again, very early. So what was this? This was very, very early uh, this morning. So we had this thing right here from this lady. She says, spot Bitcoin ETF updates. The SEC just issued additional comments on pending application S1s. This is delay signal. People got a little bit scared about this. And then Jeff James comes in to say, this is true. Comments came back on those S1 documents with the fees that we all that went crazy over this morning. This isn't out of ordinary. Expect to see more amendments tomorrow because of this. That said, I don't think this is necessarily a delay signal. And then, but what it does do though, is it really... Really, this just shows how quickly the SEC is turning these things around. Borderline unheard of to send a document to the SEC in the morning and get comments back the same day. If they wanted to delay, the issuers would, uh, wouldn't have gotten the comments back tonight. <laughs> and he says, I don't know if I've ever been tagged so many times in a tweet sent to me many times via DM, blah, blah, blah. But he's true. This, is, this is true. This turnaround is actually insane, right? The SEC... Like any government entity takes forever to do anything. And Scott Johnson just goes on to say the same thing, that everyone's working hard to push this thing forward. And the approval launch is imminent. And yes, he's taught, these things are getting turned over like crazy. And another thing too that people, you guys need to be aware of is that, yes, this turnaround time is unheard of. And to remind everybody, the S1s, which are the amendments that are going back and forth right now, they do not need to be completed when the 19B4s are approved. The 19B4s are what needs to be approved for the spot Bitcoin ETFs to be approved. And then they can take their time with the S1s. Uh, but we'll get into it here in just a second, what people are thinking for that timeline. Because when the S1s are approved, then they can start trading on the, they can start actually trading. And as we can see, the, the comments came back and we had uh, the app, the, the, reissuance of the files with the amendment, the amended comments from Van Eck and BlackRock. You also had ARC and 21 shares come in as well. And then BlackRock just refiled their S1s based on the last minute comment given yesterday. Hard to tell what has changed at first glance, but in my personal opinion, the thing is that it's unheard of. Yeah, this 24 hour turnaround time is unheard of. And I've been thinking about this too. Um, there's only one winner in the ETF wars. Can you guess who it is? what name do you see on this everywhere? Coinbase. And uh, I, in some of the private groups I was just in, some people are said they're buying Coinbase stock because it was down quite a bit. But as you can see here, guys, Coinbase is going to make fees from for custodying all of these assets. So they're going to be custodying tens or maybe hundreds of billions of dollars and charging fees. They are the actual winner in this entire ETF war. And as you guys may or may not know, I was a private sale investor in Coinbase back in like 2015 or 16. Very, very grateful for the opportunity. And if you guys aren't aware, I'm, uh, one of our projects is called Commonwealth. That is going to give you guys the same opportunities that I had back in the day to get into amazing private sales very early. So if you don't know about Commonwealth, go check it out. It's one of the, going to be one of the biggest projects of 2024. So Satoshi Flipper says, people think ETFs are some news event. Mofos, it's it's the start of the it's the start of the largest advised wealth transfer in history. There are over three hundred thousand licensed financial advisors in the U.S. alone, and now they will encourage your clients to add BTC to diversify their portfolios. Get it now. Again, we've been talking about this guy's pounding it in your head every single day. Anthony Scaramucci says announcement Wednesday, trading Thursday. We'll get some more confirmation on this in just a second, and. What's even crazier, guys, you can know in the video from yesterday and before, we've been, we've been talking about the fee wars. This is mad competition between these 12 issuers. They are going to be competing for flow. So they're going to, you know, this is, it's, because as we've heard before, these ETFs are a winner takes most scenario. So these guys are going to be putting all their efforts into their sales, the marketing, the commercials. We've already seen a few of them. 
but the fees are important. And so we, we went over the fees the other day, I think it was yesterday's video, but you can see now that they've even lowered them to be more competitive, Bitwise lowered from 0.24% to 0.2, Valkyrie from 0.8 to 0.49, Invesco down from 0.59 to 0.39, and Wisdom Tree from 0.5 to 0.3. So again, trying to be very, very competitive with each other. And so far, Bitwise, Valkyrie, Invesco, and Wisdom Tree have lowered their spot Bitcoin ETF fees ahead of anticipated approval tomorrow. Competition is heating up. And then Eric says, amazing. We're down to 20 basis points. It's like two years worth of fee war con condensed into a couple days. Thought it would take us a lot longer to get to these levels. Vanguard, not part of the race, but their spirit definitely is. And if you guys don't know, Vanguard is known for having historically low fees. And this just shows you how much competition there is for this ETF product. Guys, I can't tell you enough just how big of an event this is going to be. 2024 is going to be an amazing year. And I know a lot of other YouTubers uh, say, you know, Bitcoin is not interesting. It's not going to, you know, make generational wealth like microcap altcoins. I'm very bullish on Bitcoin, right? I still hold the majority of my wealth in Bitcoin. And it's the only thing that is solidified as a global asset, probably a global reserve currency, and will be bigger than anybody expects. I would not financial advice, of course, but definitely try to accumulate some Bitcoin. And in the bull run, when you do play micro caps that do that pump 10, 20 X or whatever, take profits into Bitcoin. You know, that's would be the, the smart play. And we'll talk about this more in, in coming videos, but I believe that one should measure their wealth in how much Bitcoin they hold versus how much dollars or fiat they hold. Okay, this is Valkyrie CIO, Steve McClurg. Obviously Valkyrie is one of the applicants. Let's hear what he has to say about this approval. If you get past today, the SEC tomorrow says, okay, you're all clear, you can start trading on Thursday. How soon before you turn around and try to make other spot products for different crypto assets? You know, I think we're going to see a lot of filings come out for uh, Ethereum. I even think we might see something for Ripple, given uh, the recent progress. Uh, you notice that Grayscale just added Ripple to one of their trusts that's publicly traded. So it wouldn't surprise me if we saw Ripple or Ethereum spot ETFs out there. I really don't know if we're going to do that or not. I think those are more retail plays and people have other ways to access them. But uh, given, given that this, this market, anything could happen, anything could happen. And, and Steve, just to clarify, because Shanali alluded to this idea that perhaps trading could begin as early as Thursday, have you received any indication from the SEC that you won't be granted approval tomorrow and that you couldn't start training, trading as early as then? Yeah, we haven't received any such indication. And by the way, nobody's really received indication that that absolutely is what is going to happen. Uh, the way that the SEC works is they don't say, hey, yeah, we're going to let you uh, go uh, Wednesday at four o'clock, um, you know, or, or Thursday a week ago. Uh, they, they, they will always constantly hedge themselves. We're prepared for a effective date on Wednesday and trading on Thursday. Uh, but we know that anything can happen. So I'm about 95 percent sure that uh, we will be trading on Thursday. That's pretty insane, guys. Uh, so, as, I mean, any, but if anybody in the, in the world knows exactly like what's going on or as much as possible, it's this guy. So the question is, are you prepared? Do you, are you positioned in the place that you want to be for what's going on, right? I certainly am. Uh, now, okay, let's, let's get into the, the altcoins, the Bitcoin altcoin system, uh, ecosystem. So. There's one specific, this is my X account. If you guys aren't following, make sure that you do that at Kyle underscore Chasse, all the alpha is there. And there's one specific correlation that I'm watching very closely. When Bitcoin pumps, we see BRC20 tokens turn green too. This has been something I've been watching closely for a while now and expect it to continue to go uh, going forward. What BRC20 tokens are on your radar now? I asked, and it is something that, <laughs> I have, you know, when, when ordinals kind of first came out, I bought some of these like ordinal Pepe NFTs or whatever. I don't know how they're doing. I faded the BRC20 narrative. Uh, I missed out on Ordi, but we're going to talk about that in a second. And I just need to start looking into this because it's obviously not going away. So today we're going to talk about some of this ecosystem. Now, Ordi is something that you guys probably have heard. It's like the meme coin on Bitcoin and Every ecosystem needs its meme coin and Bitcoin is the biggest ecosystem in the world. 
And we saw Shiba get to a $40 billion valuation. And, and we saw um, Doge get to 80 something billion. So is there another 20 to 30 X in Ordi? Maybe, could it maybe even be the world's most premier uh, meme coin on the world's most premier blockchain? Maybe. I'm interested in this. I, I, I think that I, I will pick up, and I haven't yet, but I do think the narrative makes sense, right? You have the premier meme coin on the number one blockchain in the world. On It's minted on its layer one. And we have a nice, you know, 22, 23% pullback from a week ago. Uh, this could be very, very bullish, guys. Um, I'll probably gonna pick some up. Not a huge bag, but I probably will. This in and China is going absolutely crazy for BRC twenties. Here you can see a video of a seventy-year-old grandma uh, learning how to uh, to buy BRC twenties. And so <laughs> this tweet is funny. It says one of my Chinese best friends sent me this video. Seventy-plus-year-old grandmas in China learning how to buy and trade BRC twenties. This is why Binance have listed two BRC twenty assets already, and I think they will continue. Ordinals are crazy hyped in China. If you buy now, chances are you're getting dumped on by a Chinese grandma. Yeah, anyway, that's, that's, that's that video. <laughs> okay, so now, okay, so what's going on? And, and you know, I, I'm not doing extensive coverage on this, but I'm covering the most important things because I think that what we really need to look at here is the Stacks ecosystem. So right now, Stacks is the premier L2 with the most attention on, on Bitcoin, right? It's going to enable smart contract development and everything that you would be able to do on a, on the, on a layer two that you'd want to um, using the security of the Bitcoin network. So the most secure network in the world. And I think that's a good narrative. I think it's a very, very good narrative. However, this is a hard one for me. So you have a $2.7 billion market cap, right? And it's not crazy, right? If this becomes, if Bitcoin, again, we, this, this, the show is, is different because we are talking about Bitcoin, right? And it's different. And so if, if this idea, a layer two on top of the most secure network in the world should be so obvious, right? It's the best security. Uh, the question is, is, is how is this ecosystem going to develop? So what am I going to do? Am I going to buy stacks? Well, I don't know because I know there's other layer twos being built on Bitcoin right now as well. And I'm, I'm not sure, you know, maybe we can find one that's a better deal or that has better technology. I need to do some more research, but the point is, is that what I would like to be looking at here is the ecosystem. I think the ecosystem is something that you want to pay attention to. So if you go to stacks.co and then you go to the discover section and you look at the, uh, the ecosystem, this is what I would be looking at, right? And we'll, we'll talk about Alex in a minute here, but you can see there are a lot of apps being built on top of, of stacks. And I think that if this narrative continues, and I think it's going to, these are all good things to take a look at. I didn't have time to take a look at all of them. If you guys have anything that you think are, you're very bullish on in the Stacks ecosystem, make sure you let me know in the comments below. Would love to hear your thoughts. And also if I missed any BRC20s or something in this video, or let me know in the comments below your favorite Bitcoin ecosystem plays. Okay, so as you can see, when Bitcoin pumps, Stacks pumps. It makes a lot of sense. And this is the whole thesis of this show is this narrative is that when Bitcoin pumps, the Bitcoin ecosystem altcoins are gonna pump as well. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is this BRC20.com. The token ticker is .com. And this is essentially something that you, you buy the, the tokens, BRC20, or the, the .com tokens, and you stake them, right? And if you stake them, you're going to be able to get what they call IFOs, which are initial farming opportunities. And also they're going to do like IDOs. So it's like a launch pad or initial liquidity system on Bitcoin for BRC20s. This makes a lot of sense to me, right? This makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't, uh, I'm only showing you MEXC because it has a longer history. Uh, this .com just was recently listed on Bybit. I would definitely go there. 
to, to get it if that's what you're looking to do. But you can see this is kind of how the history of the chart has, lo has been looking. And yeah, you, so what you would do is you would just go and you would just stake and then you get access to these, uh, these IFOs. And you can see that there are two pending coming up here soon. So that could be very interesting if the BRC20 narrative continues to pump, and I think it will. And you can see that the market cap right now for that is 79 million. So uh, for a launch pad, you know, that's not cheap. It's not expensive. But again, I literally cannot get away from this BRC20 narrative. I think it's going to grow like crazy. Um, and I also need to learn more about this, guys. I'm, I'm going to admit, I, I'm not an expert on the, the Bitcoin you know, layer two versus BRC20 ecosystem. Um, but I do think things like stacks, and that's, I'll talk about another layer two that's come in just a second here. Um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin ETF looks like to get approved. BRC20 tokens are bouncing nicely as a result. Uh, .com is, is still my biggest BRC20 bag. IFOs and IDOs will print, and you just got the buy bet listing. So next one we're going to talk about is is this ghosty. Now, this one, I'm still, I'm not totally convinced, but a lot of people are. So essentially it is, it, and the technology is actually really, really cool. So it does privacy swaps. Uh, you can swap from whatever, like BRC20s uh, to a different token on a different ecosystem. And it does it with privacy. The way it does it essentially is you, you can swap something and then it trades it for, so you know, you can see all these assets here that I could swap. And then I could swap it to whatever I want over here in Bitcoin, ordinals, whatever. And it does this by swapping the assets into Monero and then sending it to whatever wallet you want to. So this isn't a, a tornado cash type of mixer, but it, it does enable privacy on DEX swaps and the ghosty is a BRC20 token. And, uh, and you can see that, so a little bit about it, especially bullish on GHSY, they are moving into, uh, onto tap bringing DeFi to Bitcoin, $3.6 million swapped using their platform, will earn wrapped Bitcoin rewards when staking. This is the kind of the most interesting thing. So fees will be collected in wrapped Bitcoin. And if you stake your tokens, you will be receiving passive income in wrapped Bitcoin, which is essentially Bitcoin. This is quite great, actually. Um, it's, a, it's a really good incentive to, to buy this token, stake it. And if this thing is very successful and generates lots and lots of volume, then think about the kind of passive income in Bitcoin will be earning for the future. It's pretty awesome, actually. Right now, it's sitting at a $22 million, almost $23 million valuation. I think this is incredibly cheap. It is, it is a, a gamble at this point. It's a low cap. It's new, but it is in the Bitcoin network. And it serves a good purpose. It is a DEX. There are other competing DEXs being built, but this one has a real, that, that unique privacy multi-chain factor built in, which is quite unique. It's not like the, the other uh, DEXs that are being built on stacks, for example. Now, if you want to use uh, Ghosty, you're going to have to get this Unisat wallet. And it's just a Bitcoin wallet and enables you to do ordinals and this inscriptions, things like that. And, uh, and then you can, this is one of the things that, turned me off from BRC 20s at first. And I understand that this, this is being addressed, but it's so weird. Look, if you guys haven't seen it before, when you want to buy a token, like GHSY, I can't just go buy like 150, right? Maybe I can, but I, I need to buy them in these like offers here, essentially. They're batches of tokens. See, yeah, so I can buy like 3,000 of them for 1,480 Satoshis, right? So, it's very, very strange the way that these BRC20s work. From what I understand, this is this kind of, because this is non-fungible, right? This doesn't mean that I can just take a single BRC20 token and interchange it with anything else. I need to buy these, these chunks of them. Uh, on centralized exchanges, of course, it, it solves that problem. And I think the taproot upgrade for Bitcoin will solve that problem as well. Now, the next project we're going to talk about is Mint Layer. Mint Layer is another upcoming, um, another upcoming, Layer two on top of Bitcoin. They don't have the main net, main net out yet. And so you can see that, uh, where is it? So yeah, so you can see that, that the tokens are still being traded on Ethereum. So that's a, a pre main net token. Of course, they will do the swap when the main net launches. But it, again, it's, a, it's a, a future proof blockchain that improves direct token interoperability and enables ways to trade value, create systems, functionalities, and participate 
truly trustless finance on top of Bitcoin. So this thing has been quite quite a bit of attention as well. The uh, the fully diluted valuation is where is it? Two hundred ninety million. So for a layer two, what was ah? We haven't got to it yet. Let's see. Was it? Alex? Look at the no. Sorry, it was. Uh, what was stacks? Okay, yeah. So look, mint layer, guys. Mint layer. Now, I would suggest that you do some homework and, and compare the two of them. But look, mint layer is sitting at a three point five billion dollar market cap, and you've got or sorry, uh, stacks and mint layer sitting at two. It's it's ten x lower, less eleven x lower. It's just because it doesn't have mainnet yet. So pre mainnet, this might be a very very good buy. Uh, I would like to do a deeper dive. I'm going to try to get a call with the team and see if I can explore the ecosystem. If I am able to do that, I will do another video, guys, and dive into it a bit deeper here. I love Bitcoin. Uh, you know, I've been acquiring Bitcoin since 2012. I like that the Bitcoin ecosystem is developing. I like to see more layer twos built on top of it. This all resonates quite well with me. So Alex seems to be like one of the, the most prominent things happening right now. It is a... Uh, it is basically a finance platform on top of in stacks, right? And of course, all of stacks is secured by Bitcoin. And you can see the TVL is growing pretty fast, $118 million in TVL, uh, $665 million in total transaction volume and 37.6 thousand wallets. You can see that they've got, you can do, you can launch uh, BRC20 inscriptions on it, or you can do a launch pad. Transfer, you've got bridge from EVM to BTC. You trade through AMM or they got order book decks as well. So they got AMM like Uniswap or order books like centralized exchanges. Um, manage the liquid staking and real world assets. And then also data availability, data analytics, API, Bitcoin Oracle. This is a pretty big deal, guys. This is like the premier coin in the Bitcoin ecosystem. I haven't bought any yet myself, but I am likely to do it after this video. It, that's not a bad FDV, 233 million. The circulating supply is already circulating, so no more inflation coming in. I actually like this valuation quite a bit for something so prominent in the, like, it's the number one app right now being built in Stacks. So if you like this narrative, if you like Bitcoin, Bitcoin Layer 2s, Bitcoin applications secured by Bitcoin, this thing probably you know should get to somewhere in the tune of like 7 billion, 10 billion in the bull market. So a lot of upside here. So yeah, I, I, I'm essentially, I, re, I told you guys what this stuff is here, but the catalyst, faster transactions via Stacks Nakamoto release, Bitcoin Lab ecosystem fund launch, this is a big deal. Liquid staking, per, perpetual futures contracts, big deal. Social wallet, big deal. Real world assets, big deal. I wouldn't be surprised to see Alex at 10 billion plus market cap and Stacks at 100 billion. Wow. <laughs> but why not, guys? I mean, it's, it's, it's the same thing that we've been seeing on Ethereum forever, but we don't have the hyper competition yet, like we do in Ethereum for layer twos. Um, and so we don't, we don't have a premier ecosystem yet built out on Bitcoin layer twos. So I think that we're still very early here. And I, I don't, maybe, maybe I don't disagree with this here. Um, you know, and if stacks is to go to hundred billion, tons of upside from here still, right? What is it now again? We, yeah, so that's a third, like 25, 30 X from here. Huge. And then, where were we here? Yeah. And then Alex at 10 billion, right? So, which is also lots and lots of upside. Now, one of the things I want to bring up here, because I've been around for a long time. Now, people are talking like this Bitcoin layer two thing is new, but it's not. Six years ago, Rootstock, I was in this private sale, believe it or not. Um, and they built, six years ago, they built the first Bitcoin layer two, our side chain. Now, I'm not mentioning this because I think that you should go buy this token, but I only thought about this literally right before I hit the record button. So I wanted to open it up and just talk, talk candidly with you guys about it because I think it's worth looking into. Now, they did not, they're not doing a good job with marketing. I, I understand that they're pretty big in South America. And I went to go check the X account to see that they were make sure they were still active and they are still active. Things are still happening over here. And it seems like apps are getting built. And you can see here that, uh, that this guy's Daniel Falk says, 
Uh, happy New Year and happy sixth birthday, Rootstock. Congratulations to the hundreds of developers that have worked on Rootstock over the last six years and the incredible community of builders who have launched dApps on the world's first and best Bitcoin sidechain. Uh, Rootstock has, o has always been at the, s at the service of society. It is encoded in the Genesis block, designed as a backup system for the global economy. Rootstock is infrastructure that helps make economic freedom an everyday reality. Today, Rootstock is a top 25 layer one blockchain by TVL, with hundreds of partners making DeFi on Bitcoin real for thousands of people around the world. As we enter 2024, I am certain this will be a massive year for Rootstock. There are so many new protocols on testnet launching in the next few months and so many strategic integrations in the works, more liquidity, more users, more transactions flowing in the network. There is so much further for Rootstock to grow. We really are only just getting started. So just because no one's, no one's really talking about this yet, but could it, could it explode? I am, I'm, what I would like to do guys, what I'd like to do is I'm, I'm going to ask the research team to help me with this. I'm going to build a show based around Bitcoin scalability, layer twos, side chains, like, things like that. And I want to compare these things because I want to see the difference in technology. We know that with Ethereum layer twos, we've got rollups, we've got like optimistic rollups, ZK rollups, you know, all these kind of different things. Um, but I'm not, sure about the different technology for Bitcoin side chains, Bitcoin rollups and things like that. That's something I want to look into. But Rootstock right now is sitting at a fully diluted $161 million market cap. If this thing has any legs, you can see over the past year, it's increased to 245%. This thing could run like crazy, right? I mean, but it's definitely worth exploring. So I'm not suggesting that you dive into this, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. Another thing that I wanted to see while I thought about this is I'm a private sale investor in this money on chain. I haven't even checked the value of my tokens. I don't even see them. I don't even, I can't I don't even see them on CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap. So I'm curious to see what's going on with this, but I, I want to show you something that's very interesting. And uh, TVL, this is 22 hours ago, is all time high. It's not huge, but it's 11.26. And this is predominantly in South America. So probably pretty good for South America. Uh, sorry, 111 million of, of, TVL. That is pretty big, actually. Let me show you the most interesting thing about money on chain. Now, I, I, I messaged uh, the founders and I'm waiting for them to get me back, come back to me. But look at this. So if you just, you can actually go to money on chain, launch a dApp, you can hodl your Bitcoin. And because of the way that they built this thing, and this is, keep in mind, this is not new. I met these guys in 2018. If you would just be holding Bitcoin in money on chain protocol, you would have your Bitcoin earning 21.4% in Bitcoin annually. That's unbelievable. Right now, I, I, I will probably literally go do this. They haven't had a security breach or anything since they've launched this. I would love to have, I would love, I would love to have an additional 20% of Bitcoin right now. Like that would be great. So look, look, hold on, approve the performance of your Bitcoins while retaining full control of your private keys. Very important. Uh, I will do, I will do some more research, make sure everything's all, all legit here. And then I will make another video for you guys on this, because I think it's, it's great. If you have Bitcoin, you might as well put it in a decentralized application that's been around for a long time, trusted and, uh, you know, as it earnings. So the way that this ecosystem works, and again, I have to get more into it is you got B pro, which is what we just talked about. HODL plus earn more Bitcoin. They have a Bitcoin, Bitcoin backed stable coin. And then they have a governance token. So again, I need to dive into this ecosystem a bit more, but I wanted to put it to your attention. Um, also, yeah, this, I, I don't think I shared you guys the valuation of this .com token uh, from before. This is, oh yeah, I did, I did, I did. This is Launchpad, yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, that's gonna wrap up the show. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. And happy, tomorrow be, happy ETF, guys, tomorrow day. <sighs> again, are you positioned the way that you want to be? Do you guys think it's going to get denied? Let me know in the comments below. I will catch you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.